Today, we're gonna do something we can't even do on this RTX Pro 6000 with 96 gigs of VRAM, but we can do it on the DGX Spark at half the price. Let's get started. So today we're gonna go ahead and go through the playbook and create a multimodal chatbot with the instructions that NVIDIA gave. The reason we can't do that with the RTX Pro 6000 is because it doesn't have quite enough VRAM. And on the Threadripper build that we use this in, it would actually require it to go into regular system memory, which would slow us down pretty substantially. Overview here is just going over what the basic idea is, creating a multimodal chatbot. It says it's gonna take about 30 minutes to an hour to do, so let's go ahead and get started. Instructions, this is just making sure that we're not running any other dockers, so docker ps. Nope, nothing is running. All right, awesome. Now, this is a step that you would need if you were having permission denied issues, so we don't need to do that because we did not have any of those issues. Let's go ahead and clone the repository that they asked us to do. It looks like I have an accidental slash there. Let's delete that. It's going out, it's cloning that repository. All right, now that we've cloned the repository, we're gonna go ahead and run one of the scripts that's in there, and that is going to download all the models that we're actually going to run. Now, depending on your internet speed, this might take a while because one of the models is 63 gigabytes. But if your internet is good, it shouldn't take very long at all. That's chmod plus x model download dot sh. That's making sure that we can actually run that script. And then the next line is actually hitting run on that script. All right, now that all those models have downloaded, I like to keep a tidy workspace. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit clear. And we are still inside of that folder, but we can go ahead and take a look at the next step. The next step is actually loading up all of those Docker containers, but I wanna see what's running before we do it. So I'm gonna copy the Docker compose file name right here and i'm going to run a cat command so cat and then paste in that name of that file and we can see what's actually happening inside of that docker compose file so it looks like we have a bunch of containers running we have quinn 2.5 vl that is probably going to be the model that we have that can understand images so if you can paste in an image and say the gpt oss that we're going to get to here in a second it can't see images. So it'll reach out to this one and ask it to describe the image so it can reply. And then it looks like we have GPT OSS either 20B or 120B. We're gonna use all of the memory we can here. So we're gonna use the 120B version. It's right down here. And next we're gonna have our coding model. That's gonna be DeepSeek Coder 6.7B Instruct. That is gonna be an incredibly powerful coding model. There's nothing left in this particular file, so let's go ahead and do a cat on the other Docker Compose file. Right, hit enter. It looks like we're spinning up a couple databases and a front end, and then there's some back end stuff for the Postgres database. All right, so now let's clear all that out and we can go ahead and spin those up. So let's copy these, this Docker Compose command that they have here for us. Paste that in. Now it's important to know that if you're running a Docker Compose command, you have to be in the same directory that your Docker Compose file is in, or you have to have the full file path to that Docker Compose file. So let's go ahead and build that up. So what it's doing now is reaching out and pulling all of those Docker containers out. So we have Milvis, we have a Postgres database, Minio, and etcd, which I'm not 100% sure I know what it is. So now that it's actually built all of those Docker containers, what we're going to do is run this watch docker ps command. This is just going to make a table that's pretty easy for us to see and make sure that everything is running. So hit enter. And it looks like everything has been up for at least 25 seconds. So that is perfect. Now, what we can actually do is go to the front end that we just created at localhost colon 3000. And there's a handy little link that we have here in the documentation as well. And now we have Spark Chat and it already defaulted to dark mode, which I'm a big fan of. And we can do a bunch of things with this. We can have a rag agent, we can have code generation, just chatting with our local LLM and image processing, image understanding agent. So that's gonna be that Quinn 2.5 VL that we saw earlier. 
So they have some instructions for if we're SSH'd into the Spark and not actually on the device, but we don't need those because we're actually on the device. Uh, but we can try out some sample prompts. Let's try the RAG agent and get the NVIDIA Blackwell white paper, which we have down here. And we're going to download that. Save it in our downloads. All right, so we're gonna open our left sidebar and we're gonna hit context, upload documents. We're gonna choose that file that we just downloaded. Hit open, ingest documents. So now what it's going to do is go through and actually index that PDF. All right, so it looks like we've actually already finished indexing that PDF. So let's go to the RAG agent here. It has a question preloaded because they know that you're probably going to be following the playbook, at least at first. So what is a Blackwell GB202 GPU according to the white paper document I uploaded? And we're gonna hit enter. It's gonna think for a minute. We're loaded up to 94% utilization on our GPU and 126 gigabytes of unified memory. That is insane amounts of memory and why you wouldn't be able to do this on anything else that you can fit in the palm of your hand. And it looks like it's giving us an exact answer from our white paper. So that's awesome. So let's try something a little bit different. Let's make a new chat and let's try some code generation. Can you generate code to uh, develop a responsive personal website for my freelance AI dev business based on my personal brand palette? My palette is this, and it gives some hex code numbers. And let's hit enter and see what this comes up with. And what this is doing is GPTOSS 120B is actually reaching out to the coding agent to get the answer and then feeding it back to us and formatting it properly so we can just copy this text as though it were like a markdown file or something like that. But it is in HTML, which is awesome. Once this is finished, we'll actually be able to copy this, put it into a text file as a .html, and then open it in a web browser, and it should work perfectly, with the exception of the image sources. See, I can see here that it says uh, via.placeholder.com, so you're gonna have to put your own images in there, but the rest of the website would work. Wow, that is awesome. It's still going with the CSS. So that's how you get started with multi-agent workflows with an NVIDIA DGX Spark. If you wanna see more content like this, check out our demo that we did with NVIDIA themselves. And you can really do just about anything you want with this thing because it has 128 gigabytes of memory, which means you can load up tons of models that can all work together interchangeably with this workflow. So if you like this video, hit like, and if you want a micro center near you, put hashtag I want a micro center near me down in the comments, and we'll see you in the next one.